Okay, I've dry sanded this pretty well with this sander. And uh, keep in mind, these, the dry sanding is the most dangerous part of this work. This is when you should have a mask on. Um, I'm going to also wet sand it with the compressor and, and the other sander, the wet sander, which doesn't create dust. And, but I'm doing that to get all these little sanding marks out of here. I want this to be fairly smooth before I do the painting on it. And after I've done the painting around these lines, <clears throat> then I'm going to uh, give it another coat of the resin. So here's where I am now. I've dry sanded and wet sanded both sides. Now, I think this is probably the side I'll end up working on. I did both because I wasn't sure, but it looks to me like <clears throat> if I go over the black lines on this side, I can already see the white lines. But I'm more aware of the washes on the side that is opposite the lines that have the tape. So I think I might be better off to repaint the white lines so I get the effects of these washes on this side closer to the surface. If I do the other side the washes are below the surface. That's all gonna clean up a lot once I hit it with the final clear coat anyway. On the back side of this I've put resin and laid cellophane over the top of it to get wrinkles and also here you can see I've taped off some areas. <clears throat> well it turns out I didn't like that front side again so I'm sanding it down. Don't give up. You gotta keep working and working. So I'm gonna keep sanding but you can see the image is still under there. What I'm sanding is the uh, resin that's laid over the top of it. Uh, dry sanded then wet sanded and so you can see the image is back. Now we're going to work on this back side over here where this wrinkly surface is. I'm going to spray paint white from one direction and black from the other and then hit it with the heat gun. Now we're going black from the opposite direction. Now we're going to heat gun it. Okay, after reinforcing the white lines, I sprayed some white paint around the edges. Now you can see that the wrinkles that are behind the image show up because of the black spray and the white spray in opposite directions. It's a new day and we are ready to uh, move on to hopefully the final steps in this project. The thing is uh, in a state where I, I, I think it's ready to be finished with the uh, automotive clear coat. I do want to briefly explain what we do. This is the spray gun that we use um, with the air compressor over there. Why, you may ask, don't I just put clear coat out of a spray can? And the answer is pretty simple. It's not as good. This automotive clear coat is just like what's on your shiny new Corvette convertible. And, uh, you know, it's impervious to the elements and it, it also um, doesn't harm the plastic that we're actually painting on here, including this these acrylic drawn lines, which are plastic. You know, it gives it a nice, solid, shiny finish. Um, and sometimes I want a matte finish, so I may, after I've painted the shiny on there, I may go out and block out an area and spray a matte coat on the top of it and that'll work too. But um, 
What you need for this is acrylic urethane clear, and this is the reducer, it's called, which thins it out. This is the hardener. So this is a jar I've used a lot. I've got some marks on here. I don't need much of this. I'm not painting a whole car, so I just need to cover this small surface. Four to one mixture. I fill the um, clear coat itself up to this mark. Then I put the rest of it with the hardener in it. And uh, if I left it in here, I would get a clear solid coat of, of a solid that you could dig out of there or break the glass to get it out. But you have a little time to work without it hardening on you and causing you trouble. And as a final step to make it flow a little bit better, I put just a little bit of this reducer into the uh, mix, you know, maybe an, uh, an eighth of that mark. Other than that, the reducer is used to clean out your gun. Like I, I start out spraying some reducer straight through here and I finish up uh, spraying the reducer back through it to get rid of all the excess material. And I want to add, this is one of the most poisonous procedures in the entire process of all my poisonous procedures. So I take this outside onto my porch of the studio. That's where I do the spray. I also wear a good respirator with carbon filters in both sides. You don't want to be breathing this stuff in. So the clear coat is on and I'm going to leave this out in the sun to cure while I move on with some other steps. I take it all apart and clean it out each time. This is a piece of coat hanger wire that I've sharpened and run that through the tip uh, to clean it out. Otherwise you'll find that your, your gun will clog up. So you know, do this every time that you spray and you'll be able to quickly get to work um, each time you're ready to do this step. All right, this is the finished image. And so you can see, if we look closely, there are these t washes, wash textures. There are the color ones in the background. And through the image, you can see the wrinkled textures that show up from the back side. And that's what the back side looks like. Now there's one more important step, which is we've got to figure out some way to hang this thing on the wall. This is the back side of another piece, but I'm going to do something similar on the one we've been working on. These are two pieces of plexiglass that have had it looks like a hole drilled through them but I actually saw a groove and and put one piece on another and there's a piece of wire through here and this has been fiberglass resined onto the surface so that ain't coming off and on each corner there are a stack of two of these pieces so that the whole thing is held off the wall at the same level. Otherwise, um, this would be holding it back about a half inch off the wall and it would flop down at the bottom. So we're going to put two of these pieces on each corner as well as the hanging device. Um, also, on this one, it's been painted white so you can't see through it, but this piece over here is translucent. So anything we do is going to show up. So we've got to be pretty careful about how we put the resin on there or you'll see a big blob of resin through the image. This is a piece of plexiglass that I'm going to cut on the bandsaw.
So now I've cut several of these little pieces. These are going to be the brackets on the back. And I'm going to take two of them and cut in grooves into them that the wire will fit in. And once the groove is there, I'll set one on top of the other, which will hold it in place. Okay, this is the groove cut in the plexiglass. There's the other one down there. I didn't show this procedure because it takes two hands to do it. You can imagine pushing it into the bandsaw. And I've gone all these years without cutting my finger off, so I would like to continue that. And then, so you put the wire through there and the other piece on top of it, gluing it down with fiberglass resin. The first, the next thing I'm going to do before I actually get around to doing that is <clears throat> sanding the front and back of each of these pieces so that um, it holds the resin better. Okay, now all, all of the pieces have been lightly sanded. You know, the... When I glue it down, the wire is going to go in that. This goes on top of it to hold it in place. The other, the other pieces are for the opposite corners. So wire, wire. In this case, I'm going to use one wire stretched all the way across the back of the piece. Probably um, put one of them about there and the other one here behind this white spray so it doesn't show too much. So here we are with the uh, finished parts. Those are the two brackets I'm calling them at the bottom to hold it off the wall and here's the wire firmly attached running across there and if I turn it over there's the entirely finished piece and there you have it frogs with Poe de Crapaud